Emotional intelligence, EQ or EI for short, is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express your emotions. Basically saying that you have the awareness of how you feel, you can control how you feel, and you're able to express how you feel with other people. But emotional intelligence is also the ability to handle interpersonal relationships of how others feel as well. Emotional intelligence is the ability to manage one's own emotions as well as the emotions of others. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five daily habits to help boost your emotional intelligence. Be sure to stick around for the entire video because at the end, I'm gonna give you some long-term benefits of these daily habits. Habit number one is for self-reflection. You should spend 10 to 15 minutes a day doing self-reflection of yourself. And in these 10 to 15 minutes, make sure that you're accessing your emotions. Ask yourself questions. How do you feel today? What's your mood like? How was your morning going? Be able to self-reflect and consider any of the triggers that are going through your mind as you're self-reflecting. Sometimes you may have triggers that actually dictate your emotions and you may be unaware of it. Maybe you woke up with an attitude from something that you didn't let go the previous day. Maybe you started your day not doing your normal routine and you may be agitated about it, but you may be unaware that you're actually agitated. Whatever it is, just make sure that you're spending at least 10 to 15 minutes daily to do some self-reflection of yourself. I want you to remember that as you do this daily, it's also equally as important that you acknowledge your emotions and not defer your emotions or try to make excuses for yourself about how you feel. If you're angry, then you were angry. If you're depressed, then you're depressed. If you're happy, then you're happy. Acknowledging how you feel is the first step to accessing and knowing more about yourself so that you can control it. Habit number two, active listening. I encourage you to practice active listening in your conversations every day. Make sure that you're taking time to listen to other people and practice active listening, not passive listening. What makes listening active? Well, the thing that makes listening active is that you're taking a proactive approach to the other person and you're actually caring about what they have to say. Try validating other people's emotions and perspectives as you're listening to them. And try to avoid interrupting people as they talk. So that way you can focus more on understanding what they're saying. A lot of times I find that people feel confident or comfortable communicating with you when they know that you're listening to them because you're able to repeat what they say. But then when they also feel that you understand because you're allowing them the space to speak and to share their emotions. You have to remember that emotions are very sensitive for a lot of people in life. And when people are trying to express a particular type of emotion with their issue, then they're very vulnerable because they trust you in order to receive the information. When you practice active listening, because you've also went through self-reflection, you're informing them that, hey, I'm here for you. Hey, I am emotionally aware of your emotions and I wanna focus on understanding how you feel. This applies to your relationships. This applies to parenting. This applies to your professional life. This also applies to anything that you have where you're in constant communication with somebody. Habit number three, mindfulness meditation. You should dedicate at least five to 10 minutes of your day to do mindful meditation. Whatever mindful meditation looks like for you. I know for me, as an example, my mindful meditation is reading the Bible and having prayer and worship in my life for the first five to 10 minutes before I go into work. And I use this meditation to put me in a state of humility but also put me in a state of self-reflection, going back to habit number one. This promotes self-awareness and it gives you an idea of developing a habit to always be self-aware before you can be aware of anyone else. Mindful meditation also reduces stress and it cultivates a calm and a focused mind because it allows you to slow down. It allows you to assess how you feel. It allows you the ability to think about 
the action that you need to take in this intelligence of your emotion and it allows you to control how you feel going forward. I need you to remember and I want to encourage you to always know this. You dictate the ability of how you feel. If you don't want to feel sad anymore, you don't have to. You can do the things that will uplift you to make you happy. If you don't want to be angry, there are things that you can do to reduce your anger so that you're not angry all the time. If you want to be happy all the time, if you want to be joyful all the time, then there are things and habits that you can put in place that you can do so that you can remain happy in those moments. I'm not telling you to be happy during a time of grief. I'm also not telling you to be sad during a time of joy. I'm telling you to make sure that you have the capacity or the intellect to be aware of what's needed in the moment. Habit number four, empathy exercises. You should start developing exercises to practice empathy every day, meaning that you should be putting yourself in someone else's shoes every day. Every day that I drive and I come to work, I'm usually seeing someone on the street who is homeless. And I always put myself in their shoes to understand what they're going through and how they feel. It's important to practice these empathy exercises because it keeps you humble and it keeps you more aware of emotions. It actually teaches you how to understand emotions and how to understand the psychology of people and what drives their emotions. Not only do you understand what drives people's emotions, but you also understand what drives them and the priority of their life. A lot of these empathy exercises that you practice will not only give you insight to have a better relationship or a better marriage or a better working relationship in your professional environment, it will also teach you more of yourself, of what drives your emotions. Habit number five, constructive communication. Choose your words wisely. Spend time thinking about your response and your words to people. When you have constructive communication and you're, and you're able to articulate how you feel with empathy, clearness, clarity to other people, then other people will then be able to give you in response truthfulness of their understanding of how you feel and their actions towards how you feel. Not only will that give you the knowledge of how others feel about you, but it also will give you the confidence to know that you're able to effectively communicate how you feel. Be open to feedback. Make sure you're open to constructive criticism. I'm not saying that you need to take everything that someone's just telling you about yourself and take it to heart. Because not everybody out here, if you give them the opportunity to tell you their feedback about how you feel, is going to give you something that's conducive to your actual growth. Some people are out here to tear you down and not build you up. So you gotta be careful of that. But what I am saying is, if you're talking to people and expressing your concerns, your issues, your feelings to people. Make sure it's the people that will give you the truth and make sure that you open your heart to receiving that truth. Constructive communication, practicing that daily, massively enhances your personal growth. So that's it. Those are five daily habits that you can incorporate today to increase and boost your emotional intelligence. I know a lot of people are already aware for the most part about their emotions but some people really struggle with making the change that they really want to see in their life with their emotions some people really want to have control of their emotions instead of allowing others to control their emotions some people really want to have the ability to assess how they feel and how others feel so that they can have more confidence in their decision making versus having decisions play out with the basis of their actions of their emotions. For example, some people get angry, but because they don't have the ability to control their anger, then the outcome automatically happens with the results of their anger, whatever that outcome is. 
and they may be tired of it, but they just don't know how to truly control their anger. The long-term benefits of doing all of these daily habits are very tremendous. You could see a big boost in all of your relationships. You could see a big difference in your communication. You could see a big difference in your individual mood because you're doing so much self-reflection. You could see a difference in the knowledge that you gain and the wisdom that you gain because you're so much more in tune with yourself. You can also see a big difference in the genuineness that you display to people because you become more truthful in acknowledging how you feel. All of these long-term effects really enhance your personal development and self-mastery in your own growth. And every day, we should be looking to become the best version of ourselves. So why not start by putting daily habits in place that will help us to achieve that personal growth that we desire? Hey, I appreciate you for tuning in and watching. I really hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, be sure to press the thumbs up button down there and give me a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can get more of these personal development videos just like these. Appreciate you for tuning in. I pray nothing but blessings and peace over your life as you continue to walk with me on this Christian journey. And I'll talk to you next time.